as difficult a word to say as it is, it has a relatively simple meaning. Anthropomorphism is the attribution of human qualities to animals, inanimate objects, and even natural or supernatural phenomena. Take our buddy Nemo, for instance, from the movie Finding Nemo. Despite the difficulties in pronouncing the word an enemy, he, along with every other character in this animated film, is an anthropomorphic being. Except these guys. And also her. Taking creatures from the depths of the sea and animating them enables dark subject matters to be viewed with a lighter touch. A depressed father whose only child is kidnapped and placed into captivity might be overwhelmingly real for younger audiences with live action film. But seeing it through the eyes of a fish grants the material a critical degree of psychological distance, allowing its issues to be safely explored and even experienced as an entertaining adventure. <laughs> as humans, we try to understand life and nature in relation to humanity. This is how we look for faces in clouds, blame the gods for natural disasters, and even talk to our beloved pets. We sometimes ask them questions, despite knowing they can't respond or understand us. We also turn natural happenings into more poetic versions of themselves, such as water or rivers that have come to symbolise life due to the fact that most mammals, such as ourselves, rely heavily on water to survive. Yet, if said rivers flood, they suddenly become menacing and dangerous to life. A cultural critic from the book Thinking with Animals explained it as the disappearance of wildlife from humanity's habitat and the reappearance of the same in humanity's reflection on itself. Traditions of giving human characteristics to animals or objects have existed since the beginning of humanity through processes such as animism which is the belief that everything on earth possesses a spirit and impacts human life. However, anthropomorphism originates from two Greek words, anthropos, meaning human, and morphe, meaning form. Thus, it being no surprise that the original definition of anthropomorphism was the attribution of human forms to gods. Through the use of language, art and literature, the meaning began to slowly morph into the meaning we have today. Anthropomorphism is repeatedly used throughout the film industry and is a common tendency in everyday life. Many people instantly perceive inanimate objects and animals as having human personalities, especially when naming our animals or describing our cars. Our anthropomorphic perceptions and ideas influence how we interact with animals and also robots and products. Though sometimes it can be a bit excessive. In plenty of ways, anthropomorphism may be seen as a way to make the unfamiliar more familiar. Giving any non-human animated character flexible facial features and articulating hands enables realistic human expression that would otherwise be difficult to portray. Difficult, but not impossible. The widely recognised animated logo by Pixar includes a hopping lamp. In just a few short seconds of movement, it is clear to the viewer that the lamp is a curious and cheeky character who finds entertainment by jumping on the letter I of the logo and, to its disappointment, flattening it. The origin of this logo is a 1986 short animation by the director and animator John Lasseter. Despite it being the first computer animated film to win an Oscar, Luxogeny is a perfect example of anthropomorphic beings portraying human emotion without hands and realistic human expression. Without eyes, legs, hands or human speech, the animation still conveys feelings and characteristics to its two characters. The success of this are the physical traits these objects have that are not dissimilar to the human form. The light of the bulb being the eyes of the character is shown right at the start of the animation when the lamp acknowledges the small ball that has disturbed its peace.
This allows the further deduction that the stem of the lamp represents the body and the joint in the middle represents the hips. This is further expressed when Luke So Jr. hops into the scene. Immediately, as viewers, we get the perception that this lamp is younger and more agile due to its size and added joints among its stem. It is definitely more excited about the ball than the first character and expresses this by shaking its body before hopping away after the ball that had rolled out of view moments earlier. The use of squash and stretch in the movements of the hop is a key point in how this character comes to life. Luxo Jr.'s excitement is expressed furthermore when it comes up with the idea of jumping onto the ball which eventually punctures and deflates. Confusion, shock and realisation are expressed in the seconds that follow, giving the lamp a realistic reaction to the ruined fun. Luxo Jr.'s next hop out of the scene clearly displays disappointment and sadness, these are emotions that viewers can directly relate to, which allows understanding between Luxo Jr. and the viewer. It's not all bad though. He gets cheered up pretty quickly. Thank you for watching.